Welcome to the Bentley Systems training course where you will learn how to model and design post-tension concrete slabs and RAM concept using the manual tendon workflow. For our particular sample model, we are going to be creating banded tendons in our longitude direction. So in the layers menu, select layers, followed by longitude pre-stressing, and then we're going to go to our manual longitude tendon standard plan. While we are in this plan, you're going to notice that there are several tools available for creating banded tendons and RAM concept. First, we have a half span tendon tool. This will be used to create a single tendon one segment at a time. We have a full span tendon tool used to create a single tendon in one span at a time. And we also have a tendon polyline tool, which is used to create a single tendon with numerous spans. To begin, we're going to start by selecting the tendon tool we want and modifying or customizing the properties for that tool. To do that, we're going to go to our layer specific tool and we're going to start with our tendon polyline tool. To enter the default properties, we're going to double click on this tool and you'll see your default tendon properties appear on your screen. Here we're going to select the PT system that we want to use and the number of strands per tendon. We'll select 12 strands for this particular model. We're going to enter an elevation value for end 1 and end 2, and we're going to enter both of these at 1.25 inches. Next, we need to specify the elevation reference. For the top or for elevation at end 1, which is your high point, we're going to enter it as your top cover, and your elevation value at end 2, we're going to enter at our bottom cover. Now we're going to remember that in the longitude direction, we do have several concrete beams which are thicker than the rest of the slab. So we'll have to pay special attention to those areas to ensure all of our tendons are still within the concrete. Next, we can enter an inflection point ratio and check the Harped checkbox if applicable. After entering all of your general parameters, we're going to select the advanced tab and then we can enter the half span ratio at end one in N2, and we can position profile point 2 for equal or balanced loads if we wish. Once we are done entering our default properties, we're going to go ahead and click OK. Now what you'll notice is that your tool is still selected, and we can go ahead and start modeling our band and tendon polylines. If it wasn't currently selected, we could also invoke that tool with a single click. Now with this tool, you're going to select the end of each polyline and you're going to go along the line until it is finished. You may want to use a CAD background for additional snap points or also use any of the items within your snap toolbar to ensure that you're clicking in the correct locations. You can also zoom in and out if you wish. Here I'm going to start at grid intersection E1, then I'm going to go down to D1, and I'm going to continue my polyline until it should finish. I'll go to C2, then A2. Now once I'm done drawing this polyline, you can see my cursor is still rubber banding back and forth between where it is now and the last point it clicked. To complete this polyline, we are going to right click and say enter to finish the polyline. Then we're going to continue that process for whichever tendons we need to model. So I'm going to model one along grid lines three. and 4, and also 7 and 9. While we are modeling banded tendons, we must also discuss how to model discontinuous tendons or post-tension tendons that have a different number of strands in adjacent spans. You can model this scenario two different ways depending upon whether or not you have jacks present. If you don't have jacks present and if a span does not require as many strands as the adjacent span, you can terminate the additional strands using the half span tendon tool. The industry standard is to fork the additional 
strands over the length of the quarter of the span and terminate them at the slab centroid. If jacks are present and if a span does not require as many strands as an adjacent span, model the tendon line separately. The industry standard is to extend the tendon over a length of a quarter of the span and anchor it at the centroid of the span. To model our discontinuous tendons for this plan, we're going to assume that jacks will be present, so we'll model a completely new line of tendons. The first step in this process is to specify our tendon tools, and we're going to go ahead and double click on the tendon polyline icon to specify the properties. All of the properties that were originally placed in this dialog during the last exercise will still be available, and we just need to modify the parameter that will be changed which for this model will be number of strands to six. Then we're gonna go ahead and click OK. Now again, we could just click in the GUI to specify the locations, or we can also use the command prompt at the bottom of the screen. For this exercise, we're gonna enter in the coordinates of our different locations for our tendon. The first one will be at 54, 84. Then we click Enter and you're going to see that your cursor has been set. We'll go back down to the command prompt and enter the next point. Once we are complete with this process, we'll go ahead and right click and click enter in the pop-up menu to model our new line of tendons. To complete this process, we will want to go a little bit past the column at grid intersection B4. To do that, we're going to be using our half span tendon tool. Over in your layer specific toolbar, we'll now double click on the half span tendon tool and we'll identify the properties we want to change. We're gonna do elevation value at N2 to be at 12 inches, which will be mid-depth of that concrete beam that these tendons are located within. Once we're done, we'll go ahead and click OK. And again, for convenience, we'll use the command prompt. And here you can see our half span tendon has been created. In addition to modeling tendons using the layer specific tools available in either your manual longitudinal tendon or latitude tendon standard plans, you are also able to use any of the manipulation icons such as move, copy, mirror, or stretch in order to achieve your desired geometry. For this particular model, we are going to copy all of the tendons that are located along grid line 4 to grid line 5 and 6. In order to make a copy of the elements, we're going to use the move command with our shift key down to make a copy instead of just simply moving the tendons. Our first step in this process is to highlight the tendons that we want to move on our screen using your selection tool. Next, we're going to access our move command and then we're gonna hold down our shift key. We're gonna click on grid intersection A4 then we're going to click on grid intersection A5 to create those tendons along that grid line. We're going to repeat this process clicking at A5 and then over to A6. And now we've completed the process for modeling our banded tendons along grid lines 5 and 6 using some tendons that have already been modeled. Now after you model your banded tendons, you may want to edit any of the properties that were used when those tendons were created, such as your profile points or your quantity of strands. To modify the properties of a tendon, you're first going to select the tendons you want to modify. Now you could modify more than one tendon at a time, and to select more than one, you're going to hold down your shift key as you make your selection. Here I'm going to select all of these tendons that we've chosen on our screen. I'm going to right click and say selection properties and then I can modify any of the properties. For this operation I'm going to choose to enter the value at end one to be at six inches which is at my mid-depth of my slab. 
Now all of my band and tendons are going to actually be terminated at mid-depth, so I'm going to modify all of them accordingly, whether or not they're in the slab depression or the concrete beams. Next I'm going to focus on my concrete beams. Again, I can hold down my shift key to select more than one at a time. Right click and say selection properties. And then value at end one for the concrete beams, I'll enter at 12 inches. I'm going to complete this process for the tendons in the slab depressions. And for these I'm going to terminate them at 5 inches. The next step in our workflow for modeling our band and tendons is to talk about how to model jacks in RAM concept. Now RAM concept can calculate the force losses in a tendon if jacks are modeled at the live or stressing ends on the manual tendon layer. RAM concept will utilize the FSE values for the PT system from the material criteria if jacks are not assigned to the tendons. If you wish to model jacks, you're going to go down to your layer specific toolbar and double click on your jacks icon. Here you're going to select all of your default jack properties. You can use the defaults for the PT system, or you can also specify any of these parameters. You can specify the jacking stress, which is the stress in the strand at the jack at the jacking end. You can enter your anchor friction coefficient or the loss of stress due to friction in the anchorage. You can enter your wobble friction coefficient, which is the product of the angle friction coefficient and the accidental angular change per unit length. You can enter your angle friction coefficient, which is the loss due to deliberate curvature. You can enter your seating distance or the distance that the wedges recede into the anchorage, or also the long-term losses, which is a sum of losses such as creep and shrinkage of concrete and relaxation of strands. If you want to keep the default properties, we're going to go ahead and just select this checkbox and then click OK. And then we're ready to start modeling our jacks. You can see that the jacking icon is still active and we can fence around the tendons in the model. And we're going to place all of our jacks along grid line E. So I'm going to draw a fence around all of the tendons there. And you can see by the little purple square that jacks have now been modeled. Now if a jack is modeled on a tendon layer, all tendons on that layer must have at least one jack attached. So I couldn't just apply a jack at one of these tendons, I would need to apply them at all. And also jacks are only permitted on the manual tendon layers. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.